Alright guys, welcome to Blu-ray update number 19. Finally. <clears throat> there will be another one at the end of the month. Whew. Forgive me, I just woke up like 15 minutes ago. It's not easy staying away. But yeah, let's get started. First movie I got for six what was it, six bucks at Walmart? Or Best Buy? Whatever which one? Basic instinct. I mean I mean, come on, it's basic instinct. This movie is fucking sweet. Alright. Um who else could take an erotic thriller with two at the time top of the line actors, okay? Still get away with an R rating after receiving the NC-17, I do believe. Um, and then just making it work. You know? But then, gonna make a bullshit sequel that sucked dick. Okay? Literally. <laughs> but this one. This one doesn't suck, okay? This one fucks the shit out of the second one. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I loved it. Very good. Nice to have it finally. The next one I have is Battle of Los Angeles Blu ray Steel Book. I love the Steel Book, okay? If you know everything, you know anything about Steel Books, all my UK buddies out there, you'll know this was my first one, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. Not one scratch on it, that was very nice. Um, the movie itself is awesome. I loved it. A lot of people don't like it. Um, a lot of people just don't like good movies. I just don't know why. But then they'll see Transformers. And those movies were terrible. Okay? <laughs> but, yeah. Me, I give this one a lot of credit. Because it make Independence Day look like a bitch. Alright? You know? If you, last, if you watch my last update, you know what I mean by... Because the aliens on this movie have more balls to come down and have have fights with us face to face. Okay, they have their own little versions of tanks. They had their own like machine guns. You know, their spaceships were autopilots. You know, there was no damn shields and no green shields and these stupid little alien spaceships coming out shooting shit up. No, 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 no. It was done right. I love it. One movie I had never seen until I bought this on Blu-ray, but absolutely loved it, was Big. I had never seen this movie until I bought the Blu-ray. And you know what? I am damn proud I bought this Blu-ray. This movie was awesome, okay? I had never seen that. They don't make nothing like this no more. I'm just telling you, okay? 13 going on 30 wasn't this fucking good. <clears throat> um, Yeah. I gotta switch the case though, because it's an echo friendly case. Same as for basic instinct, but I'll get it. <coughs> but, uh, very good time. This is one. I wouldn't, even though it's PG, I wouldn't necessarily say watch it with your kids. Like, watch it with your wife or girlfriend or on a date or something. Because even though it's PG, you got one kid dropping the F bomb. Yes, it got away with an F bomb in a PG movie. They nearly got away with a sexual content scene in this movie. <laughs> nearly. This movie had a lot of stuff in here that could have been PG-13 rated. But somehow still maintained a PG rating. Still, that's why I like movies in the 80s. You, no matter what you did in this movie, you could probably still get a PG rating. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> I'm serious. Even had a little bit of a, like a struggle. Rolling around on the cement stuff and still got PG range. So that's basically like a fight scene, basically. There's a lot of stuff in here that could have been giving this movie a PG 13 or R rated, but got away with it. <laughs> Can't do that nowadays. Next one it's Final Destination. Picture quality is not that good. I believe you're just better off sticking with the DVD. Okay. I want to get two, three, and the 3D version of The Final Destination in this update, but I'm going to have to do that for October's update because didn't have time. <laughs> too busy saving money and too busy going on trips. But, yeah. Um, what I got this for? I got this for like 12 bucks at e FYE. I seriously, 
seriously overpaid. <laughs> Even though that was the discount price, I seriously overpaid. Okay. The discount price, the, the regular price was fourteen. I have a mama member, so I got it for twelve ninety nine. So I was able to save myself two bucks. I wanted to save more than that on this. <laughs> Not a good transfer at all. But still a good movie though. Another movie I've never seen but thought it was okay was Green Zone. Um, yeah, it was not bad. I like how they got the the color of the movie though, but oops. <laughs> Here's the problem, and I think I people 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 other other people's updates I watched and I will agree with them. The nighttime scenes in this movie are grainier than a son of a bitch. It is a lot of grain when a night scene comes, especially when that very first night scene comes. It looks, like, it looks like a swarm of bugs on your screen. I'm like, damn. Y'all couldn't clean the night scenes more up than that? That was the best y'all could do? <laughs> but you know what? It was an okay movie. I, I kind of like Paul Greengrass movies. Well, I have to because he made the second and third Born movies, which were fucking amazing. Okay? Born Legacy will suck because he's not in it. It's Jeremy Renner. So I guess it's basically going to be a reboot. Oh well. I won't be seeing it though. But yeah, Green Zone, not bad. Um. Okay. Next one, which I loved, was Source Code. Now, this movie was nice, okay? It was done well. It wasn't too long. It didn't overstay its welcome. You know? It was edited perfectly. Something that Groundhog's Day was not. I think that movie was like, what, two hours? It was just the same, same, same thing. I don't know what the fuck that plot was about in that movie anymore. Because I haven't seen that movie since the movie theaters when it came out years ago. But, yeah, he's um basically a, a soldier. That was in the war, but I believe got in. Well, I do, but I don't believe. I know, kind of got messed up in a way. So he's inside this little system where they need him to help try to find this bomber of a train. And just like Back to the Future, I love the twist at the ending. Just like Back to the Future, things change, which was good. I was good. They had a happy, a happy ending, and. Didn't screw it over by having him not do all this for nothing, you know. So they make a two, I'm on board. Hopefully, though, this this was good. <laughs> Get it? Oh, this was a uh, this is an Echo Case too, so I'm about to get it switched. But right now, it's just it's just a slip cover right now. So yeah. <laughs> Next one I got that was surprisingly good. Well, I knew it was because I seen it. Was the Lincoln Lawyer? Um, yeah, I, I like this movie. It was amazing, <laughs> surprisingly, you know. Um, I can't recall any Matthew McConaughey being like this, you know, this gritty, this dark, this this fucking amazing. <laughs> it's about time, man. You need to do more shit like this. Seriously, do more movies like this. But, um, yeah, the movie was nice, okay? Then you got the love, Heisen played Not Guilty right there. I like that shit. Um, yeah, um, Lincoln Lawyer, pick it up, man. Handle his business in the back of the Lincoln. <laughs> and another one I ain't never seen, and over, I haven't seen at all. And it's like, what? 13 years old now, and I have not seen it? Until now, it's the Big Lebowski. I'm like, where in the hell have I been all these years? This movie was awesome, okay? It was fuck. It was funny and all the way through. Why it was funny? Well, because of these two. But especially because of John Goodman's stupid behind. This fool was just cussing his ass off. It was a side of John Goodman I ain't never seen before. And I loved it, okay? I like it when mainstream actors go out of their way to make good stuff, even though it means cussing their asses off. 
if it serves a purpose, it's good. So it kind of serves a purpose, okay? And they are rated for nothing, you know? <laughs> ain't like Bad Boys 2 where they were just cussing for no reason. For two and a half hours. No, no. They make it work in here, you know? And I like this. I like this. I like the Digi book. This is my second one. First one being The Matrix. But yeah. Very good movie. I'm surprised they, ne surprised they never made another one. I don't know why. And here's one that I liked. But could have been a little bit better. Was Paul. Yeah. I'm kind of getting bummed out on Seth Rogen movies right now. He's kind of getting to me. You know? After making The Green Hornet this year, which was shit. Cause they messed up the entire mythology of Green Hornet. I don't know why they keep messing with the stuff. If it's written, just make it the way it is. Stop fucking with the content that's already there. So, I don't know. I guess ever since that, he's kind of been... I, I haven't been laughing at him that much anymore. You know? I... <laughs> just not funny to me anymore. Uh, maybe because he's getting to me. Maybe because I've been with them since... What was it? Forty-O Virgin? Maybe because it's been a few years now, so... Just wearing a tearing, but... Paul... Was okay. It was funny, but... I wasn't laughing out my, uh, out my seat funny, you know? It was just... Okay. Here's something I'm really disappointed with this transfer, but it's the original version, so I have to have it because I'm a fan. It's God Gojira, aka the original Godzilla movie, the original Japanese cut. Okay, this is not the one, with the, not the one with Raymond Burr, not that bullshit American one. This is the good one right here, <clears throat> where there's no, there's not one dialogue of English in this movie. It's all Japanese. So you have to read the subtitles to see what's going on. And, uh... The problem with this is... It's not 1080p. It's 1080i. What world are we living in that use 1080i nowadays? Where's the good 1080p's? Huh? Y'all need to re y'all need to really release... Re-release this one. They got all the special features they got on here, the making of Godzilla, the original trailer, the making of the suit featurette, they went through different versions of the suit. Godzilla was going to be ugly, you know? Before they basically, they basically turned him into a, a uh, dinosaur at the time. But this part, he's a dinosaur. Later on, he becomes an alien. How? I don't know. It's different variations of Godzilla all around, so in order to find that out, you have to really pay attention or you'll miss it badly. <laughs> but I still got it because I love Godzilla. A new Godzilla will be coming out on Blu-ray later this month. And to complete my series, I've got Kill Bill Volume 1. The last update I had Volume 2. Yeah, I like this one a lot better than Volume 1 because, um, oh, I don't know. <clears throat> Her right here with the sword, slicing and dicing every single Asian, like hundreds and thousands upon Asians that was just coming at her ass. It was fucking sweet, you know? <laughs> they were getting their ass whipped by a woman, no doubt. Okay? With a samurai sword. Slicing your limbs off. I think she even chopped one dude's head off, if I ain't mistaken. You have to look real good or you miss that because it's so fast. <laughs> I guess they cut it so fast that way it can get the R rating. Because I'm pretty sure this would have been NC-17. If not, already was. And then was edited to get the R rating. But if it managed to get the R rating without being NC-17, Quentin Tarantino, you're the man. Because <laughs> the movie itself should have already been NC-17. You know? But, uh, yeah. Volume 1. Nice. They need to hurry and make Volume 3. The daughter's supposed to... The daughter supposed to take over now but why call it Kill Bill Volume 3 when 
you know, Bill's already dead. I, I don't I don't understand, but we'll see. Oh yes. Finally glad to have this classic on Blu-ray. The Blues Brothers, baby. Come on, seriously. It's the Blues Brothers. You need to bring out Blues Brothers 2000 now. I know a lot of people don't like Blues Brothers 2000. I like that one a lot better. I like that one the most. I like this one too because it's a classic. But I like the second one because it's a nice, good tribute. Okay, it wasn't trying to be um, different. You know, it was trying to be what we grew up and loved. And a lot of people hated that. I don't know why. I kind of respected that. Because it was just a tribute to everybody else. We lost, we, they lost like almost the entire cast in the first movie. So I wouldn't be, I, I, I wouldn't hate that for trying to do something to basically say thank you to people who died and thank you to the fans, you know. But the original, solid good movie, you know. Trying to, um, was it raise money to save the orphanage? <laughs> Um, I just kind of wish this. I just kind of wish that this one was kind of like a PG-13 too. Don't try so hard to be R-rated, you know, because the second one is PG-13. But you know what? A, a that a Blues Bros movie it looks like it could be a PG-13 movie, you know. Did it really have to be R-rated though? I don't know, but maybe I'm just nitpicking. But still a good movie, good transfer. I like it. I always watch the extended versions. I never watch the theatrical versions. I've seen the theatrical versions thousands of times. I might as well watch the extended ones, you know? The two hour version, I mean, the extended version is two hours, 13 minutes. I mean, the theatrical version is two hours, 13 minutes. The extended is two hours, 28 minutes. You know, I'm in for two hours and 28 minutes. What you think this is, boy? Now, on to the better, bigger and better ones now. We got the Scarface still book, Blu ray still book. This is my second one. Um, yeah, this movie is a classic. I got the original Scarface in here too. That movie was awesome. I had never seen the original Scarface 1932 version until this. Too bad that wasn't on Blu-ray. Why did they put that on a DVD? They could have put that on Blu-ray too. Why not? It would look better. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, Scarface is one of my Possibly one of my all-time favorite movies, and um, the video game Grand Theft Auto Vice City took its fault views from this movie. Everything you did in Vice City was almost the exact same as this movie. You know, you just had Ray Liotta doing the voice, but um, the transfer was probably as good as it's gonna ever look. You know. I say it like that, and I got a little dent right here. Thank you, Best Buy. But yeah, it probably won't look no better than this. So I might have to give that picture quality four out of five because it's, it looked better than when it did on DVD. Okay, so I, I'll give it that much. It's nice. It's cleaned up. It's more colorful. It's very good. Nice, good transfer. Whoever paid $700 for a cigar box, here's what I think. Smoking that shit. <laughs> and another, some, another one people kind of bitched about was the Star Wars set. This is the complete saga. Of course, I had to get it because I'm the all-time great Star Wars fan. Had been since I was a kid. And I know there's a lot of changes in here. Like, they have... CGI Yoda at episode one, which was kind of good to me because now that CGI Yoda will go with the other two CGI Yodas in episode two and three. So that series in itself is kind of complete now, now that he's a CGI version and not a dummy anymore. You know? But a lot of people don't seem to like episode one. I don't know why. I, it's fine to me. I mean, what? It's not that much action. It's an origin story, okay? Origin stories don't have a lot of action in it. It's supposed to be telling a story, which it does. Um, yeah. If you really paid attention to the Star Wars franchise, 
everything they say in the original three is in the I mean in the prequel three or in the original three. They fans are just so excited about Star Wars they miss it. And I'm not gonna go to in depth and explain anything because if I explain this right now, I'll probably just confuse you. Okay, so just go sit down. Really have a look at all six movies, starting with the first three. Not the original three, okay? The only thing I can say wrong with episodes one and one, I mean two, was the bad acting between uh, Hayden Christensen and the, uh, I said Naomi Watts. Natalie Portman, you know? The same thing can be said in episode three with their dialogue, but I still like the first three. All right, uh, there's nothing wrong with them to me. Why? I mean, just because Darth Vader turned out to be a whiny little bitch. Um, isn't that every villain in every movie? So why, when George Lucas does it the way he wants it to, people bitch? No, I'm not a George Lucas fan. I didn't even know who he was until this movie came out. Well, not to this movie, but to Indiana Jones came out. Okay. But people have got to realize. The changes he made to this collection is probably the way he sh he wanted it to be from the beginning, okay? He's probably doing it the way he always wanted it to, but didn't have the technology to. He probably seriously didn't have the technology to make CGI and Yoda through all six movies. I wish he probably would have. That would have been nice to have CGI and Yoda throughout all six movies. But, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not whining. I'm, I'm not nitpicking. I enjoyed it. One I uh, have not seen yet, not open yet either. It's risky business. Got this for ten dollars at Target. Um, I heard some good things from a lady at, um, who was serving me at uh, Outback. I told her I had bought it, and she said it was very good. So I'm gonna give it a watch pretty soon. But one I did watch and did enjoy to the fullest with bridesmaids. This movie was. Oh my goodness gracious, this movie was funny, okay? But especially because of her, Melissa McBride, oh man. This this girl is, I mean not McBride, Melissa McCarthy. This girl is adorable, you know that? She's big, but she's funny. I gotta give it to her on that one. I, I can't knock funny people, you know? Oh, just an all around good time, you know? Pick this up. It's not a chick flick. So I don't know why people keep saying it's a chick flick. No, the fuck is not. Stop bitching and go enjoy a good Judd Apatow film, okay? <laughs> I'm a Judd Apatow fan, so you know I'm getting all of his movies. Y'all should too. There's nothing wrong with this. Alright? Me and my girlfriend sit here and watch this. We had a laugh. We had fun. Okay? That's the point. <laughs> and they wearing all pink. Mariah loves pink. The back of the case is kind of pink too. She loves pink, so yeah. Of course, she loves the movie. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Finally, glad to have this Beetlejuice. But the case is kind of cracked right here. I got three cases that are cracked at the tip of here, so I'm gonna have to get some new cases for these. But it's okay for now because I'm gonna be switching them out anyway. Because this is um, it's also. Oh, no, it's a regular case. It's a regular case, but it's chipped. Now, it, it, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't been, it would have been okay if it was an Echo case, though. But the movie. Oh, my God. They're going to make a sequel to this. I got to say one thing. If y'all make a sequel to Beetlejuice, you need Michael Keaton back, okay? And then, you know, I don't know, you need Tim Burton back, okay? You can't have Beetlejuice without these two, okay? And Beetlejuice is another example of PG movies dropping F-bombs. Even Michael Keaton dropped one in here. Okay? Squeeze his balls to make a hunky noise like a clown and still got PG rating. I mean, you can just get away with it back then. Why can't we get away with it now? Have some fun, Hollywood. Have some fun. Okay? Stop remaking shit. Okay? Use your minds. Y'all were good at that in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and 50s. What's wrong with today? Hmm? But anyway, Beetlejuice, very good. I loved it. And here's one that probably would have been R-rated when it came out. 
And I do believe, yep, that the Blu-ray version of Dumb and Dumber is an Echo case, so I'm gonna get that switched. Uh, yeah, this movie would have been R-rated. I ain't kidding. There's a lot of things in here that borderline disgusting, but funny, you know? They actually show what the spit looks like when he spit on his sandwich. It was green and black, like, I think it was tobacco. Like, ugh. Oh, my God, man. I think this, the dude that spit on Jeff Daniels' sandwich, I believe he was to getting ready to rape Jim Carrey in the fucking bathroom. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Because he pulled his pants on. This motherfucker wearing a thong. What the fuck? Really? Hell no. <laughs> Jim Carrey on the floor sucking his thumb. Jeff Daniels coming in with his foot on fire. Knocked his ass out by accident. And stumping it in the toilet. That was funny shit. <clears throat> yes, Baba, I'm glad to have the real version of this movie. Finally. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Me and my girlfriend watched this on, um, Netflix Saturday night. The real one, too. And, um, we enjoyed it. And one that I bought yesterday, but haven't opened yet, but have seen the movie, and was just balls to the wall funny, Talladega Nights, baby. <laughs> oh, man, this movie, this was an example of Will Ferrell at his best right here. He's making a lot of dramatic stuff now, which I praise him for because he does like he he is kind of turning into a dramatic actor now. Um, Jack Black needs to do the same thing because his comedy is kind of running dry right now. <laughs> Seriously, I mean he was good in King Kong. He should keep doing dramas. I like it, but this this is one of the greatest comedies I think Will Ferrell's ever done. I don't like old school. I really don't. But this one, I had a laugh at. And you know what? It'll probably be the only movie that John, with John C. Riley in it that I'll own. Because I really don't like John C. Riley. I really don't. <laughs> I don't think he's all that funny. But in this one, I guess because the way it was written, he is. Okay? Because he's his best buddy and all that. And unlike um, Step Brothers, which I was okay, but I didn't really enjoy much. I know, don't hate me. I just didn't enjoy it much. People don't, people don't enjoy movies like everybody else do. Uh, this can't touch this. It just can't. <laughs> and it's the unrated version too. Finally get to see what the unrated one's about. Then you got Amy Adams in here where it's hot as shit with the glasses on. Oh, looking like a nerd. But yeah. Tired of nights. Can't go wrong. Well, thank y'all for waiting for this long ass time for this Blu-ray update. I will have another one at the end of the month. Hopefully, if I get more Blu-rays, it will be at the end of the month. Uh, I will be unboxing more Disney Blu-rays. My Disney Blu-ray unboxings will continue no matter how old the Blu-ray is. But I will be getting them. So, yes, I am J-Dub. I am out. Peace.